Welcome back to another episode of Introductory Organic Chemistry. Today we're going to talk about EAS reactions, also known as electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. But before we get into that, let's go through the practice problems I assigned last lecture. Now in this first problem, we take 1,3-dimethoxybenzene and we treat it with this cyclohexane containing acyl chloride in the presence of aluminum chloride, which just acts as a Lewis acid catalyst. And the question is, will the following reaction occur? And yes, it should occur very easily because this is a good electrophile in the presence of a Lewis acid. This is going to have no problem reacting with a good nucleophile. Additionally, we have good orthopara selectivity from 1,3-dimethoxybenzene. And so this reaction should occur without any issues. Now, in the next problem, I asked you to use N and E parameters for this electrophile and this nucleophile to predict whether or not the following reaction will occur. And so if you recall, the easiest way to get a simplistic understanding of whether or not this reaction would kinetically occur is to just add the sum of N and E. And if it's more than negative five, it will usually occur very easily at room temp. And so here you go, we get a sum of 0 0.4. This reaction should occur easily at room temperature. In this final problem, I ask you to predict which, which products would form from the following reaction and whether or not you'd expect multiple products to form. And so first, this is an alkene. This can get protonated by strong acid to form a secondary carbocation. And that could add in the ortho positions as this is a good ortho para director. Since the para position is blocked, it can't add para. And additionally, because this is an electron withdrawing group, this is going to direct addition to the meta position relative to the sulfonyl group. So this should very easily just direct to the ortho position. Additionally, since this is an electron donating group, the ring is still activated. So it's totally conceivable that we could still add two equivalents. And so this would be what, what you get if you get one equivalent. This would be what you get if you get two equivalents. Now, this is one step away from the product propofol, which is used as an anesthetic. And the way that they convert this diisopropyl 4 sulfonyl phenol into propofol is to just treat it with water in the presence of an acid, and this desulfonylates. So later on today, we're going to be talking about sulfonylating agents. And you can actually use a sulfonyl as like a kind of protecting group for aromatic rings. However, sometimes they can be more challenging to remove. So these would be the two products. Now let's get to today's material, EAS reactions. We also call them SEAR reactions because it's a it's an electrophilic aromatic substitution reaction. Um, but sometimes you just see this written as EAS instead of SEAR. Okay, so you might recall from last lecture, we talked about how electron donating groups are ortho para directors, while electron withdrawing groups tend to be meta directors. Um, it's worth remembering that we can rationalize this by showing something like aniline, where aniline puts a negative charge in the ortho or the para position, and this just rationalizes why it's easy for electrophiles to add there. Additionally, if we look at something like nitrobenzene, we can see that a positive charge can be placed in the ortho in the para, direction, uh, para position, which is why an electrophile is not likely to add to the ortho or to the para positions. This is why we tend to get electrophilic addition at the meta position relative to the nitro group. So there are several different types of electrophilic aromatic substitution reactions. The friedel crafts and Vilsmeyer we briefly talked about in the last lecture. And in this video, we're going to talk about nitration, halogenation, as well as sulfonylation. There are some other electrophiles you can use, such as like sulfur dichloride or disulfur dichloride. But for the most part, I'm not going to discuss those in this video. If you're interested in electrophilic functionalization with sulfur electrophiles in general, I'd be happy to do a topic in a future video. But for the most part, if you're looking at EAS reactions or SEAR reactions, the main two things that you're going to see are nitration and halogenation. And that's because nitroarenes are a very versatile building block, and so are aryl halides. Aryl halides can be used for Grignards, they can be used for cross-coupling reactions, they're super versatile. You can also lithiate them. Okay, so in general, when we have a nitration, it can occur even on fully deactivated arenes. So the case in point would be the synthesis of TNT. So in this case, we can see toluene. And so this can undergo a nitration. Since this methyl group is a ortho para director, the nitro could add to the ortho or to the para position. But here I've chosen to show it as the ortho product. Here you can see now that we have an electron withdrawing group. This directs further addition to the meta position. And the methyl group is an ortho para director. So it can also direct to the para. It could also add to the ortho, but we're going to go for the para first in this case. Once this additional nitro group has been added, we can see that the nitro and the other nitro are both directing to the meta position, and so is the methyl group. It's directing to the same position because it's ortho. And so this is why TNT is able to be made. Now, most of the time, if you're going to do a nitration reaction, if you want it to go really well, you can use fuming nitric acid, 
which can be easily distilled from uh, concentrated sulfuric acid and potassium nitrate or sodium nitrate if that's all you have. Um, you can just distill off the 99 plus percent nitric acid. However, it's very dangerous. Here I'll put in a card uh, to one of my shorts where I show nitric acid or fuming nitric acid totally incinerating a nitrile glove just upon contact. Um, sometimes it's overkill and so you might get over nitration. Sometimes dinitration can occur with fuming nitric acid. In this case, we see trinitration occurring. Um, typically for the synthesis of explosives, fuming nitric acid is required, um, although I'm no expert. Okay, so sometimes if you have disharmony, you can lose selectivity for where the nitrate will go, the nitro group will go. So in this case, you can see this uh, one, two, bis, dimethyl, aniline species. The problem here is the pair of position can be selected for by this aniline group. However, the other aniline group is going to direct ortho and the ester can direct meta. So the blue and the orange position are both rather activated. You might recall from last lecture that I said ortho para directors will tend to select para if possible. If the para position is open, they're usually going to go there, but there are exceptions. So in this case, this is an anecdotal experience of mine where I tried uh, forming the selective para nitro product, but I actually obtained a mixture of these two uh, and unfortunately was not able to separate them. Now, one of the reasons you might want to install a nitro group is you can use it as a means to an end. If you're trying to plan the synthesis, uh, like a multi-step synthesis for functionalization of an aromatic system, a nitro group is going to be a meta director, whereas an aniline is going to be an ortho para director. And so there's different reductants that you can use to accomplish the following transformation. Um, most of the time for each case in the literature, they're very case specific and usually different conditions have to be screened and you just go with whatever works and whatever is cleanest. Most reducing conditions are fairly variable, but the palladium on carbon with hydrogen is fairly reliable. So some examples of reducing conditions are shown here. Palladium on carbon with hydrogen, using iron in its elemental form with HCl, sodium hydrogen sulfide, tin 2 chloride, as well as hydrogen iodide. There are other methods that exist, but these are some of the more common ones that you'll see. So Recently, there's been some more advances. So there's been additional N-nitro reagents that have been prepared, such as N-nitrosaccharin. Saccharin was an older artificial sweetener that you can still get. Uh, I believe this is in sweet and low, uh, as well as N-nitrosuccinamide. N-nitrosuccinamide hasn't been shown to functionalize arenes, to my knowledge, but it's another electrophilic nitrating agent worth being aware of. So in this uh, paper here, you'll find a good reference where this n nitro uh, and nitrosaccharin is able to functionalize various different already electron deficient aromatics quite selectively. In some cases, they see ortho para selectivity issues, but that's standard for nitration reactions. Here, you might also note that they're using HFIP, the magic solvent for this transformation. Another cool example was in this drug derivative where they add a nitro group here. So one of the things you can do to an aniline is you can diazotize it. I haven't shown the mechanism here, but in a future video, we might talk about the substitution of diazoniums specifically, and we'll go through the mechanism there. But what you can do is you can essentially replace the NH2 with an N triple bond N plus, which can then be displaced by attack at the benzene ring with a nucleophile, or depending on the nucleophile, the nucleophile can attack at the nitrogen. So for instance, you could do an EAS reaction where an electron rich benzene attacks at that nitrogen and you get what's known as a diazo compound, which are often used as dyes or food coloring. Um, okay, additionally, you can generate an aryl radical. So if you treat this with a photocatalyst in the presence of light, you can generate an aryl radical, which can be used for cyclization reactions. Um, you can do SET via other methods, but aryl radicals are one thing of interest. Now, we haven't talked much about radicals in this course so far, but in the future, we'll talk through some uh, relevant radical chemistry. Another cool thing you can do with uh, anilines is if you have an ortho carboxylic acid group, you can form what's known as a benzyne. So in this case, we have this anthronilic acid. Anthronilic acid is titrate, or is treated with a nitri nitrating agent, a nitrite, which converts it to the diazonium. This is then able to eliminate nitrogen gas and CO2, forming a benzyne. And you can add all sorts of electrophile nucleophile pairs to benzynes. Really, really useful intermediate, but very explosive, especially since this produces gases. Now, next we'll talk about the halogenation of arenes. So most of the time in modern chemistry, you'll see N-bromosuccinamide, N-chlorosuccinamide, and N-iodosuccinamide used. It's harder to install fluorines to aromatic rings, but you can do them from diazoniums, for instance. There are other methods utilizing aryl iodides, but for the most part, we're just going to be talking about aryl bromides, chlorides, and iodides. 
Uh, it's also possible to use something like elemental bromine if you'd prefer. Uh, most of the time in textbooks, you'll see bromine used in conjunction with the Lewis acid catalyst, such as iron tribromide uh, or maybe aluminum trichloride still. So the reason that this works is it forms an intimate ion pair where the FeBr3 helps polarize the Br2 bond, making one of the bromines more negative, which kind of bonds to the iron, and then the other bromine more positive, which is what's able to lack, uh, which is what's able to react with the electron density of the benzene ring. So in this case, we can see NBS reacting in dichloromethane, specifically at the para position. It's also meta to this ester, so we have really good directing effects. It might be worth noting that the ortho position is blocked, so the other potential site of addition is prevented from having any reactivity occurring. Okay, in this next example, silver 1 is used to activate iodine. So this will form a silver 1 iodide salt, and so that this can be like an I plus reagent. And so the I plus selectively adds once to this benzene ring uh, and doesn't react further, likely because it's already fairly deactivated by this nitro group. Now, if we wanted to sulfonylate an aromatic, the traditional conditions that you'll see in textbooks are oleum, which is a mixture of sulfuric acid and sulfur trioxide. Sulfur trioxide is really, really reactive, and when you mix these two, uh, it actually forms pyrosulfuric acid, which is like a dimer, and it's so acidic that pyrosulfuric acid is actually able to protonate normal concentrated sulfuric acid, so quite a potent acid. Um, there's an alternative, though, that that there's seen uh, some modern use of, which is TMSOSO2Cl, trimethylsilochlorosulfonate. And essentially what this does is this just, uh, the chloride is like a leaving group, it can react with the ring, and usually in workup you'll cleave the OTMS group. And so in this one case, you can see that we got really selective, clean, high yield conversion of this compound on the left to the sulfonic acid on the right. Now on the next slide, I'm gonna show you some more examples of it. In this case, they observed quantitative conversion to this disulfonylated product, whereas these other two benzene rings didn't react at all. Uh, and finally, in the case of this aniline, which is a quinoline, uh, they observed single para-selective transformation to the sulfonic acid. No ortho selective, uh, no ortho reactivity was observed. So recently, there's been a few advances in the field uh, using HFIP. Surprise, surprise! The magic solvent strikes again. So in this one paper, there's the nitration of benzene rings uh, using both nitric acid as well as the N-nitrosaccharin. There's been examples of uh, N-halosuccinamide halogenation, and this is a really good paper that I encourage you to check out. And finally, the electrophilic thia friedel crafts acylation reaction. And so here they just use sulfonyl chlorides, uh, or rather sulfonates, sulfinates, SO2 minus salts, electrochemically convert them to sulfur six species, and then do essentially friedel crafts, but it's a sulfonyl instead of a carbonyl. And this is an interesting paper that highlights the use of electrochemistry in synthesis. So if you're interested, I'd encourage you to check that out. Now, for this lecture, I'd like to assign three practice problems. First, predict the product of the following reaction. We treat this uh, ether containing nitrile with n chlorosuccinamide What kind of product forms? In the next problem, we have this 1,3-bis trifluoromethylbenzene. This is treated with nitric acid under standard nitrating conditions. What product forms? Finally, we take 1,3-dichlorobenzene and we treat it with oleum. What sort of product forms? And so I hope that this has been a useful lecture on uh, SEAR or EAS reactions. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below, and it would really help out if you left a like and subscribed. Have a great day.